Is a Hydro worth the purchase? Let's figure that out today. I'm gonna to give you an actual review of this machine and give you my thoughts, whether or not this thing is worth its purchase price, more than double what a Concept2 machine is. Is that experience worth it? How's the machine from soup to nuts? Let's take a look at the machine itself, as well as just my general opinion and my experience so far with the Hydro. But first, let's bring this puppy front and center. Be right back. We're good. All jokes aside, that is actually one of the bigger differences between this and a Concept2 machine. Now, I've already done a video comparing Concept2 to, to Hydro, so I wanna just focus on this machine today, but its weight at 145 pounds is definitely something that you need to note, as well as the electrical concept here. I need to be able to plug this machine in to be able to use it. Now, I have various outlets here at Dark Horse HQ in the garage, and so I'm able to kind of wheel it around, but I do have to have an extension cord with me most times to be able to fit it around. And that is definitely something to take into consideration when you're looking at this machine. It is definitely cumbersome as well, noted by the weight. And what they're intent with, as I understand it, is that this machine is intended to be a centerpiece. It's intended to hold its place and not go anywhere, similar to what you would find with, you know, a, a Peloton or a major piece of machinery in some kind of gym where you, you know, have electrical for everything. So this just being more new concept to me with most rowing machines just being very light and mobile and able to move around, this definitely changes the narrative on that, but all for a purpose because that power and that weight are necessary to create a computer driven drag, which happens inside the mechanics of the machine here, as well as to power the monitor, which is what really creates the experience. And that's what Hydro is banking on is that you enjoy the experience of having a large monitor with a class style structure and somebody to follow at all times. And we're gonna get into that more in a little bit. I just wanna make sure that we go over the basics of the machine first, from the dimensions, the weight, the price, all those things, just to get them out of the way. And then I can give you kind of my thoughts on what it's been like to use this machine and to mess with it for a little bit. Now it's important for me to note as well, I do have an affiliate relationship with Hydro. So if you decide to purchase the machine after having watched this video because you find it useful, and the link in the description below is what you use to make that purchase, which would be very awesome if you decided to do that, well, that's gonna go and help me. So thank you for doing that if you choose to do that, and also full disclosure. And the other piece of this is that Hydro did send me the machine that you see in front of you. So it's not something that I paid for. I, I, it's not gonna change the way that I review this just because I think you guys deserve to have nothing but a good neutral review of this machine, the highs and the lows and everything in between. Uh, but it is important you know, Hydro sent me the machine and I have an affiliate relationship with them. Those things on the table. Let's go ahead and get into the review. Let's start with just a very easy and quick look at the numbers on this machine. But if you want a more in-depth apples to apples, Concept2 versus Hydro, because you're kind of comparing those two, check out this video where I actually put the two side by side and you'll get a more in-depth look at that. But really quick for an annual ownership of this machine, listed price 2,199. Every time I've looked, I've found a code which has brought it down to 1,999. Off of that, I based my local sales tax, which is $169.92. Then $456 in annual membership because that's $38 a month times 12 months and you need that membership to be able to use the machine brings my total annual ownership to $2,624.92. That's cost of ownership for a Hydro for one year's time. Next, let's get into the specs of the machine. It comes mounted with a 22 inch touch screen monitor with speakers. Actually a pretty great experience. So I gotta give them credit for putting that onto it. Next, let's look at the actual footprint of this. It is 86 inches long, nose to tail, by 25 inches wide. That's going to be almost a permanent footprint on the ground because of its weight, which is 145 pounds. This thing is generally in intended to stay in place. You can store it upright, but because of the weight of the machine, Hydro wants you to buy a hook system that goes into the wall that's, I assume, going to be demounted in case the thing took a fall. That'd be a pretty big crash factor. So. If you're going to store it upright, you need to buy their mounting kit as well 
to make sure that it's safely stored upright. Now, with the weight of this machine being 145 pounds, I was actually surprised by the lower range of the weight limit for a user, which I would arguably want to see higher. It's only 375 pounds. So for somebody who's choosing this for a weight loss journey, you may be eliminating some people who could sit down and use this machine because of their weight. And frankly, I'd like to see that maybe 50 pounds higher, 425. I think that would be a better opening weight for users to be able to comfortably get on this machine and be able to use it safely. So that's just something to consider when we're looking at the actual ability to use it. You're going to have to can be concerned with that 375 pound max weight limit for a user. Now other small and interesting factors when it comes to just specs on this machine, the monitor does have a 15 degree swivel side to side so that when you are doing off machine work, which they do have classes for, you can turn the machine to the side and be on your mat over there and still see the monitor. Nice little feature. You are also controlling your drag factor via a computer controlled resistance. So there's no lever, button, anything like that, knob, nothing like that to twist. All of this happens dynamically through the computer, which actually adjusts the drag factor for you. So that's definitely different from many, any, from many, any others, <laughs> from many other rowing machines out there. The mechanism of movement on the machine is a strap versus a chain. So I would liken this more to what you would find on a water rower with that strap being the tension system, how you actually connect the handle to the machine. Those are things to consider there. Connectivity wise, you are looking at Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and Ethernet connection on this machine. Kind of comes loaded with everything that you need. It's using PCAP touchscreen technology on the monitor, which I've found to be a pretty good interface and very fast and responsive. When you're clicking, you're getting that responsiveness pretty close. There is some slight delay in that though. The actual build of the machine is an aluminum and steel combo, and the exterior body is a flat anthracite polymer. Now, what does that mean to me? I have absolutely no idea, but I felt that it was important to give you the actual specs and details on this machine. One other note on the monitor itself, there is a camera and a microphone on the monitor, which I didn't notice at first. It was actually when I looked at the specs for this video that I found that it's supposedly not being used yet. Who knows what that'll be used for in the future, but there are interesting possibilities and potential there. Okay, wrapping up specs. Price-wise, yes, it's definitely more expensive than most of the machines that are on the market. It's definitely heavier and requires electricity. Size-wise though, it's about normal. And experience-wise, this is I think where a lot of the discussion is worth bringing in. I'm gonna bring you into the monitor in a second, but uh, that's where most of the discussion is worth having about this machine. Now, getting into that, now that I'm down on the machine, let's just talk about the basic setups on this thing in case that might vary. Okay, let's talk setup on the machine, meaning the way that I connect and all my contact points. There are some refinements that have been made in these contact points that I think are going to be beneficial. Some are actually, I feel a little bit detrimental. Let's talk about what those are. Number one, the seat, built-in cushioning. This seat is not rigid plastic. There's definitely a little bit of give and foam here, which means you're gonna have a bit more comfort in the ride, a bit more like riding in the back of a Rolls Royce versus the driver's seat of a sports car. Definitely more comfortable in the ride. You're not gonna have to worry about that stiff seat in the long run. Next, on the foot stretchers. I can't verify this because I don't know the exact measurements to run, but it feels like my foot stretchers are sitting a little bit higher than what I'm used to. And so if I use my normal, normal foot stretcher setting, it feels like my foot is so high that I'm almost getting pinched at the hip, losing range of motion. So I find that I'm dropping my foot stretchers a peg to give me a little bit more clearance into the catch position. Finally, the handle, the material is what I wanted to talk about. The handle is the handle. It's where you hold on to the machine, but, the, the texture, the, the whatever material this is that they've used where you grip, doesn't really turn tacky when I start to sweat. Instead, it almost starts to feel slippery. Now I haven't slipped, I haven't been so sweaty that I let go of the handle, but I, that's just something to note. The, the texture on this does not feel perfect. Feels like it could be, I don't know what it is. So not that that's a game changer or anything, but it is something that slightly bothers me in the middle of a workout. I, I want my hands to feel tacky and instead I feel like I'm having to put effort into just making sure that my hands don't slip off the handle. As far as setup goes otherwise, not a whole lot's changed. The monitor height is about perfect for me. And so it's not, I'm not having to worry about any up or down movement. Not that there's a lot of adjustment that can happen there anyways, but that being said, the monitor's in about the right place and everything else setup wise feels about right. Next, talking about the rowing. Here's, I mean, 
the thing, right? This is what you're getting this machine for is the rowing. Take a listen to how quiet this is. Now, this is, I, I, might, I might say this is one of the quietest machines out there. I haven't verified this yet, but it's definitely quieter than mo the, the machine that you typically see in here. So I'm just gonna really gas it and just listen to this. There's almost more noise from the seat sliding on the rail than there is from the mechanism internally that's giving me the resistance. That's definitely an interesting note. And that's a big positive for this machine because it means that this thing can be used in environments where we're worried about bothering other people with the noise. Maybe you have young kids, maybe you live in an apartment building. This is definitely going to reduce that noise level that a lot of people worry about whenever they're bringing a piece of machinery into their homes. For the rest of my review, it's actually pretty important that you kind of be able to see what it is that I'm talking about. So I'm gonna bring you on in right here so that you can see what it is that I'm looking at. I think it's important now to, for this part of the review to just kind of parse out the pros and the cons of this machine. So I'm gonna start with the cons. I think let's get those out of the way. Let's talk about the things that I think could use some improvement, could use some work. I've covered a couple of them already, like the handle, things like that. But let's talk about the real experience itself. And let me start there. So critique number one of the machine is I have not been able to find any kind of just row function. Hydro did offer to give me a VIP onboarding experience, but I wasn't gonna take that because I wanted to make sure that I had the same experience any of you would if you purchased the machine. So I declined that, and supposedly there's somewhere in here where you're going to be able to just row, but I have not been able to find it. I found something that is like, it's just a scene of the back of a boat. Maybe that's what they're considering their just row where there's no instructor, there's no class held or anything but I haven't found a feature where I can just program a workout that I wanna do and then be able to execute it. And I think that that's a, a downside for sure. If there's anything that I wanted to do that was outside of the bounds of what Hydro was offering me in a class setting, I haven't found a way to do it yet. You can't program your own workouts. You have to follow along with a coach that's here. And to me, that takes away some of the accessibility of the machine. It means that I am always going to be beholden to whatever Hydro decides to deliver in a class experience. Now that class experience is pretty decent, but it means that there's not as much flexibility with the machine. So my next critique of the machine is around the way in which many of the stroke rates come through in the class structures. And these are just the classes that I've been through, but it feels like they run rates pretty high. And the reason that that's a critique for me is because that's one of the biggest errors for somebody that's just getting used to a rowing machine is they perceive that to go faster, you have to take more strokes. The problem with that is it creates that hamster wheel effect or the black hole of energy, the black box of energy experience, which is, man, I just, I feel like I'm working so hard, but my splits are not getting faster. Well, that's because nobody is teaching you how to take better strokes. Instead, they're just letting you take lots of strokes. So my critique of this is that they're kind of appealing to that mass error, which is that People don't, obviously, you wouldn't know how to use the rowing machine the first time you sit on it. So it's our responsibility as purveyors of rowing movement and machinery to teach people and to help them along, right? We want to elevate everybody through the process. And with that being said, the learn to row basics in the machine are lacking, in my opinion. And also, all of these kind of connect one to the other, right? So that critique of it also then lands in the lap of that there's no outside connectivity to the machine. Connectivity meaning the only things you can connect are headphones and heart rate monitors. That you can't connect any outside apps or anything so that if you want any other kind of experience, you really can't get that with a locked down ecosystem. Now that has its pros and its cons, but all of these kind of following the daisy chain of connections and critiques that I have about the machine, that would be it you have to go with what Hydro has to offer. And that's why I wanted to do the cons first is because I'm gonna show you what kind of experience you're really getting once you actually get into the machine. So now we get to talk about the fun stuff, which is what kind of experience does this thing offer you? And frankly, I'm impressed by the experience and I, I like it for what you are getting here. Now let's get into the library of workouts because this is the real meat and potatoes of the cool experience that you get when you are on a Hydro. 
Now, they have over 1,500 workouts, both on the machine and off the machine. Again, thus the ability to turn the monitor if you're not on the machine. Other features when it comes to the monitor that I think are a little bit less important, so I'm not gonna cover them uh, ad nauseum here, is the feed. This is where you can like other people's workouts and they can like yours. It's just, a, it's a light experience touch. Next, you have the racing tab. On the racing tab, this is a part that has grabbed me and I think is worthwhile. There's a weekly meters race and you can join teams. So you can create teams of two people and then you and your partner's scores are combined. And it's just a, a one workout and it's the workout changes each week. You both have to do it. Your scores get added together and you get ranked on the meters leaders dashboard. And then next to that, you have a minute leaders dashboard, which is the same thing. Pe the number of minutes that you and your partner have rode put together. These have been fun. My wife and I started a team together and we both became actually pretty engaged in this and did have fun. And one of the things that I looked forward to was jumping into the meter leaders workout because that gave me an opportunity to work hard because I was racing other people and I knew that our team was dependent upon it. So that's a nice feature as well. Then you have your progress bar. That's where you're tracking all of your data. Every 60 days of rowing that you do, they are going to donate to water.org, which is pretty cool. You can also see your milestones here, all of the work that you've done, et cetera, et cetera, all the classes you've done. So if you like to class, you can go back and repeat it. They'll tell you what that is. And you've got your profile setting. And that's where you put in all of the normal stuff that you would, your height, your weight, where you live, things like that, change your password, switch your profile, et cetera, et cetera. And after that, you've got a help tab where if something's going wrong, you can check in with Hydro to get a little bit of help. So what you see when you actually get into the library is this big list of workouts. Now, all of these workouts, of which there are over 1,500, are going to give you a wide variety of workouts to choose from. And I think what's so dynamic about this is the ability to use this menu to sort through the workouts that you would want, and it's gonna help you decide, okay, which what am I looking for today? Now, first and foremost, this is straight out of the Peloton handbook, but you get all of the coaches that you can choose from, and that's pretty cool because when you like a coach, you're just gonna wanna follow along with them. So of the 1,500 workouts that you have available, I wanna follow along with Akil. I love Akil's workouts, so I am going to select Akil. He has 53 workouts of the 1,600 plus workouts available. And I get to choose anything with him from a five minute technique jazz cool down to a 45 minute power plus endurance plus hit workout. And so what's great is I get to choose anything that Akil has done. And it means that I get to follow along with him and enjoy him as a coach. Now, removing the coach is going to allow me to then move on to duration. So when it comes to the duration, you can choose anything from one to 45 minutes. Now they do have one workout, one odd workout, which is 79 minutes. But other than that, everything that I've seen is 45 minutes long. So this is part of where you run into the, if Hydro doesn't allow you to do it, you're not going to be able to do it. So while this is a 79 minute Charles River row, of which there's nothing to do, right? They're not telling you, uh, what you're doing or how you're going to do it. You don't see a coach. All you see is this screen of you getting to row for 79 minutes, which is great. But again, I can't program in what I want to do during this time. So if I wanted to do 500 meter intervals while watching the screen, I'm left to do that on my own. And I don't get to program it in here, meaning it doesn't get read that I did 500 meter intervals. I think that's a glaring thing that could be improved upon in their setup. So coming out of that, you can see it puts you into and suggests that you get into a five minute cooldown, which I think is a really great thing for them to do. But back to this screen, you can next choose workout type. You have drive, sweat, breathe, warm up, cool down, journeys, learn to row, and on the mat. Drive, sweat, and breathe are like our beginner, intermediate, and advanced. So that's the way that I would uh, break that down for you. Then they have journeys. I believe they perceive journeys to be their just row function. Now that's great in that there's no coach there, but I'm still limited by how long the workout is, what I get to program in there, and there's really nothing tracking me through that. It's just kind of a meters accumulation for that amount of time. Now to their credit, there's a 79 minute Charles River Sternview row here. So sure, I can go up to 80 minutes of training, but there's no workout selected in there. So this is where you start to see the, oh, okay, I got it. So while I can row for 80 minutes, you can't actually program the workout. That aside, 
You also have on the mat things, which is, you can see all off the machine stuff where you are, oh, let me turn off journeys. So these are all workouts that you do on land from Pilates to stretching and functional movement, things like that. So here's where you can get those other experiences and that's where pivoting the monitor back and forth is helpful. Next up, you have the learn to row. And this is where I think they could improve. Again, only three workouts under learn to row. <clears throat> Hydro, call me. I'm happy to work with you guys on this. Then aside from that, warm up, cool down. That's really great that they have those things. I think those are important for people to do. And I like that they lead you into that. Now, here is where this interface really benefits you. They're encouraging you to hook up your Bluetooth audio, encouraging you to hook up your heart rate monitor, and then adjust your sound and your drag settings. So to do that, I don't have either of those that I'm gonna connect right now, but you would connect, connect, and then inside sound and drag settings, you can see here's where we get the music profile. And this is what I think they do well because they have great playlists in their music, I assume made up by the coaches themselves. And now you can select more music, original mix, more athlete or athlete only, meaning I want to hear more music because I just want to tune into the music and I don't need as much coaching, but you'll be able to hear it a little. Then I want the original mix, which is going to be about 50-50. Then, oh, I just want to hear the coaching. This, their music is not that important to me or just athlete, in which case you're probably putting your own music into the setup. And again, connected devices, audio and heart rate. Those are the only things you're going to be able to connect on this machine. And finally, drag. And this is where you actually adjust your drag factor from 50 all the way up to 300. That is going to be a strong stroke. And other than that, I'm usually living at about a 119, 118. And all of that is because the computer is what generates the resistance in the machine. So it's computer controlled. Again, no dobs, niles, levers, anything like that. So once that's done, then I can click into the row and that loads up the workout for me. And there's a kill. I'm gonna turn the volume down on this so that we aren't hearing him for the time being. But he's a great dynamic coach and I love that as soon as you pop in, you're just with a keel on the boat, you are on the water, and boom, I'm in the setting here. And I love this because I'm just face to face with him. And as an instructor, they're immediately connecting to me. And that's very, very cool because it's I'm, I'm into rowing now. I'm not just on a rowing machine somewhere in a gym or a garage or my basement. I'm on the water. I'm seeing whatever body of water that he is on. And a lot of these are filmed in Boston, I believe, and this is just such a great experience. Now, the nice part is it's going to set up a countdown. So it's getting me ready to get into the workout. So I'm actually gonna start spinning up with him here. Now, what you can see is that you're gonna have your standard measures here. You've got split, time remaining. This is the warm up. Right now, they're giving us a minute of warm up to get ready to go. So it's counting me down to the workout start. Then I have stroke rate my split average, my total meters, my calories, and my heart rate if I had a monitor set up. Now, the other beautiful part is this. I absolutely love this dashboard here because it's going to show me who I am in competition with throughout the workout, and it's always telling me my placement. Now, this is straight out of a Peloton playbook here where they're giving you the dashboard to know how you're doing, and honestly, this is the thing I thrive in. I love this piece because it makes the engagement way more fun for me. So. I'm going to start spinning up here and you're going to see how this experience begins to engage me. So you can see my ranking on the right as I start to climb. Oh man, 15. Climbing those ranks quickly. So you can see that I'm following along with Akil. He's warming us up right now. I'm following his stroke rate. And this is where the experience of a hydro really becomes fun, engaging, and worthwhile. So the experience wise, once I'm in it, I'm having fun. I'm kind of forgetting about everything else that's around. The coaches are dynamic and engaging. I, so frankly, sometimes I'm impressed by what they're able to deliver at the high rates that they're at and that they keep talking while they're putting on some serious work on the machines. Now, I'm gonna set the handle down here so I can keep talking. Now, this, everything that I just talked you through, in my opinion, is what really makes the Hydro a worthwhile experience that's worth considering. 
is because if you want this immersive, great videography, changing camera angles, seeing the reality of rowing while not having to learn rowing to begin with, you just want to get on a machine, you want to get a great sweat, this is it. They do it and they do it well. The amount of effort that they must have put in to building up their film setup is pretty impressive, as well as always having a boat wherever they go. They have cameras set up on the machines. The coaches are somehow able to hear the music that's playing in your playlist while knowing what the workout is. It's just very dynamic and well put together and orchestrated and for that, yes, you are paying for it, you're paying the membership for it, but I do think that's a pretty great experience.